today on Divorce Court. My biggest problem with Maurice is he never takes me seriously when it's time to communicate. Nicole's always nagging me. She nags me about everything from how I dress, what I'm cooking for dinner, how I interact with the kids. I want the judge to tell Maurice to stop being selfish, stop procrastinating, and start taking care of his family. I love being a father to all our kids, but sometimes I wonder if that's the only reason we're staying together. Divorce Court is now in session. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here with Nickleby Downing and Morris Davis. The two of you have been together for three years. You have two children together, but you do not want to be together anymore. Ms. Downing, I want to talk with you first. Why don't you tell me a little bit about this relationship and why you're here? And a, give me a little better background about you. Um, I grew up in church with my mom till about 17 years old. Every day we'd be in church except Friday. Um, Friday every day? Every day. Every day we'd be in church except Friday. It was always something um, for us to do. Sunday morning, Sunday night, we're in service. Tuesday, children's service. Wednesday, uh, prayer. Mm -hmm. Thursday is the ad young adult service. Friday, we had the day off, and Saturday, it was witnessing. So mm -hmm. we definitely was in church, and it was... It was normal for our lifestyle. Right, right. Um, some of the, our, part of our religion, we couldn't wear pants. We couldn't have, um, you know, part of, of our body showing. Um, mm -hmm. It was, like I said, it was a normal childhood for us. Everything was fine. Till about 17 years old, we parted from the church. And so my mother... Your whole family parted the whole from the church? family, okay. yeah. Um, it was an incident there. And so the, my mother allowed us to kind of be free to do whatever we wanted to do as chi as children mm -hmm. um and then we they st my parents started working nights both mm -hmm. of them and so we partied at the house right. um they would leave at night we'd have friends come over and we had fun you know it was the weekend partied cleaned up the house and by the time they got home and perfect kids at 6 a.m i gotcha i gotcha i gotcha i happen to know you've got Seven children. Yes. From six different guys. Yes. Uh, from five. From five different guys. Yes. I'm sorry, I, yes. I missed the count. Yes. How do you go from church six times a week to five different baby daddies? Well, I, we didn't really have a chance to even have so much fun. So when I get introduced to, when I got introduced to some of uh, the guys that I dated, I kind of believed what they said until I found out that it was all a lie. That once I had a kid, it was like, oh crap, what did I get myself well, what into? What were they telling you? Uh, just different stuff like, you know, when I first met them, oh, I have this wonderful job and I'm stable and, you know, the girlfriends before, um, you know, it's, it was their fault, the reason why they split, until I dated the first child's dad. We have a, we have a graph here. Yes, yes. You get it together. So in 2003... Yes. And he was lying and he was telling you all that stuff. And 2003 is when I gave birth. So 2002, he was lying and, and telling me all that yeah. stuff. Yeah. And then he just dropped you? And then I dropped him. Uh, and then in, you took a year break there. I and then we got months, a, yeah. a girl in 2005. How'd that happen? A girl in 2005, I just moved to Moreno Valley, and I ended up meeting this gentleman. Um, we hit it off pretty good. We, he would take me out and, you know, take me to the movies, take me out to eat. I met his family, and it just so happened that he was killed. So, yeah, oh he was murdered while oh. I was pregnant. You, oh, yeah. my goodness. Now, in 2008, who'd you meet? In 2008, I met, in 2007, I met my husband at the time. Okay. And so he's very family oriented, but I noticed that he had some controlling ways. So I would confide in my mother and she'd be like, hey, you know, you just got to be uh, submissive. This is your husband now. Mm -hmm. So after being submissive, I realized I don't care what till death do his part. He's too controlling and I'm not going to take it. He would crash all the cars that we had. I bought a car every month for, tw and I was with him as his wife for a year. Mm -hmm. So I bought a car each month for a whole year. And then I had my child and I left him. I said, this is it, I'm not taking it. When my baby gets here, I'm leaving you. And oh. I did. 
Okay, 2013. 2013, after all that chaos, I decided I want to have some fun. I decided I'm going to date someone that has their own place. I have my own place. We won't live together. I want to have some fun. So I dated my fourth child's dad, and that's what w it was. It was fun for the whole year. Now, I understand fun. But by that time, wouldn't you think you'd start thinking about contraception just a little bit? Well, I did. <laughs> I did. 2009, I didn't have a kid, so, I mean, I was... I'm just saying, but, I did. <laughs> but you have to use contraception every time you have sex. You I can't did. just use it in 2009 and <laughs> expect it to work. Well, in 2009, I met the gentleman, so at the end of us departing is when I got pregnant in 2010. And I had my child, so. Where, where are we, 2014? We passed 2010, we, and now we're 2013. 2013. Who was he? Booty call. No birth control on a booty call? No birth control on a drunk booty call. No, ma'am. Your Honor. Well, ma'am, it's cool. Okay. Uh, uh, 2014. I met this gentleman. Maurice. And the last two are his? Yes. Woo! Long way to get to you. How you doing, Mr. Davis? <laughs> all right, yourself? <laughs> I'm doing all right. <laughs> Well, Mr. Davis, I'm going to give you an opportunity to talk for a minute about what's going on in your marriage. Okay. Ms. Downing, do you believe that Mr. Davis is cheating on you? I wouldn't necessarily say cheating, but he's messaging females. Did you see any of the messages, and what did, did they say? How are you doing, beautiful? I didn't know that you were that age. Oh, you look young for your age. Can I get to know you? When can I meet up? How you doing over there, Mr. Davis? Pretty good, and yourself? I'm, do I I'm doing well, I'm doing well. She told a very long story, you stood there, I, I appreciate that. I'm gonna ask her how you two met, and then I'm really gonna let you say something. Uh, Ms. Downing, how did the two of you meet? So I decided to go on a dating site and look into, for a particular, just someone to talk to. At the time, I was nine months pregnant with my fifth child, and I just wanted conversation. I didn't even really want to meet anyone. So. Um, most of the people that were talking to me was very well that, uh, aware that I was pregnant, but they would say stuff like, uh, that was inappropriate, like, can we meet up at 12 midnight to have sex? Mm -hmm. No, I don't want to do that. You're a creep. Next. So right. that's when I met the gentleman, Maurice, and nothing that he said to me was sexual in any type of way. Every time that I would speak to him, every time we'd message, it was clearly, how's your day? Um, how many children do you have? How are they? How are, you know, their personality? And I bet, you know, the, at the time he was two, I bet the two-year-old is rambunctious. It was a regular conversation. Way to go, Mr. Davis. <laughs> Love and Regular that. conversation. Like... Love and Amazing. That. Now, I've got to ask you something, Mr. Davis. Did not the fact that she had so many children frighten you at all before you got into a relationship with her? No, because I thought her personality was, you know, a wonderful personality, and I really liked it, so... So the, so the kids didn't scare you? No, not at all. When did you start living together? Almost immediately. You, you never take your time, do you? No. Mr. Davis, when she moved in with all of those kids, did you find that difficult? Or no. did you enjoy that? I actually enjoyed it. You know, I enjoy being a father to all the kids, but I'm afraid that's, like, the only reason why we're still together right now. What's wrong with the relationship between the two of you? Mainly communication. You know, there's a lot of, you know, arguing and bickering and fussing. What's your biggest issue that you argue about? I guess me cheating, I guess. But I'm not cheating. You know, it's but just... But she thinks you're cheating. Yeah, exactly. You know, she wants to go through my phone and, you know... Chase Check you around, messages. where you've been, exactly. grilling you, investigation. Ms. Downing, do you believe that Mr. Davis is cheating on you? I wouldn't necessarily say cheating, but he's messaging females. Did you see any of the messages, and what did, did they say? How are you doing, beautiful? I didn't know that you were that age. Oh, you look young for your age. Can I get to know you? When can I meet up? Do you do that kind of thing, Mr. Davis? Yes, indeed. Yes, I have, I have. Not, that's not what's going on currently. But, but why did you? Why we would get into it, like, you know, we, we get into some real harsh arguments, and she says some real harsh things. But at the same time, you know, I went through her phone and saw, you know, uh, exchange she, she was having with the gentleman exactly. That was very inappropriate, you know, about, you know, can I come through, can we hang out, you know, 
I that type you. of thing. I got you. Ms. Downing, you said in your papers that you believe at this juncture he's not in love with you anymore and he's just staying for the kids. And I want to I want to figure out why you feel that way. What is it you want him to do for you that he, ha he hasn't been doing? Those messages that he sends to other females, hi, beautiful, can I hear that? I gave you two kids. That's better than I gave everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Are you surprised Maurice was so accepting of Nickaby's five children? Tell us what you think at Facebook.com slash Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back. If you would like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free at 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at DivorceCourt.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Divorce Court. Why do you believe that he's just there for the kids and he's fallen out of love with you? The house that we live in is not warm anymore. It's not, you know, I, I used to want to watch movies with him and sit with him. And it's like we just mechanically walk around the house. We just take care of the kids. It's, you know, because they're seven and I got uh, three, a two and a 14 day old child. Um, we just basically take care of what the children need and what the house needs. He does cooking, I do cleaning. He takes care of the two and three year old. I, right now, take care of the 14 day old. And if I need to take a shower or something, I give our daughter to him, take a shower, come back, feed her. Let me, it's mechanical. Let, let, me, let me present this to you. Anyone who has that number of small children are gonna find themselves in that situation where all they are doing is taking care of the children. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean you don't love one another. Do, do you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Mr. Davis, do you love her? Yes. Are you still happy to be there? Yes, very much. But once again, she nags so much, like every day is kind of like- Are you an all day, day commentary kind of, kind of person? Yeah. You get angry a lot? I, I wouldn't say angry, I get annoyed a lot. Tell me what you get annoyed about. I get annoyed about the fact that um, my child is 14 days old and the house is a mess. Such as, example, my two-year-old likes to eat and walk around the house. Well, if, with that many children, you have to be constant on cleaning. You have to pick, pick up after them constantly. So if he's walking around the house with food, the three-year-old, who knows the rules by, by now, wants to do the same thing too. And so I say, hey, Maurice, you need to tell him to go, you know, you need to put him back Are in the high chair. Are either of you working? Not right now. Wow. Uh, it, let, let me ask you, Ms. Downing, are you in love with Mr. Davis? I love him. But you're not in love with him? I don't know, really. Mr. Davis, are you in love with Ms. Downing? No, but I love her. Do you think that is a function of you simply have so much chaos going on in the house with all those kids that you haven't been able to feed the union and that can be fixed by uh, turning your focus and how you treat one another even in the midst of the chaos? Yes, I believe so, yes. Ms. Downing? I just... You seem a little angry with him. Just you, you just hurt. You're annoyed. Just hurt. Hurt That's by... All hurt by the fact that he doesn't notice that I'm hurt about the fact that I don't think he really cares that I'm hurt. What are you hurt about? Feeling neglected by him. What is it you want him to do for you that he, ha he hasn't been doing? Those messages that he sends the other females, hi, beautiful, can I hear that? I gave you two kids. That's better than I gave everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think Nickaby and Maurice's relationship can be repaired? Share your opinion on Twitter and Instagram at Divorce Court. Divorce Court will be right back.
Mr. Davis, what do you have to say about this? I mean, you were messaging for how many years? Was it over a long time? No, it was just like on and off, like whenever, you know, we would get into it, because trust, when we get into it, she says stuff that I would never say to her. You get what I'm saying? That uh -huh. I would never say to another person, period. Right. So, I mean, if I can't talk to you, I'm going to talk to somebody else. Do you think this is fixable? I mean, I think anything's fixable. Do you want to fix it? Yeah. Do you want to fix it? I just want my best friend back. Do you want to fix it? Yes, if, if it's fixable. Yeah. Ms. Downing, let me tell you something. Sometimes things take time. I think you make decisions very quickly, and you make assumptions very quickly about, well, he doesn't love me because he's not doing this or not doing that or the other thing. And what happens in a marriage is you get caught up, especially when it gets messy. You got a lot of kids, a lot going on. You get frustrated by things. And when mm -hmm. you get frustrated by things, you say things that you don't mean. And he says that you say some outlandish things. And I, 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 bet, you, and I bet you roll when you get, get angry. Yeah. I mean, you roll at him. Yeah, I do. And, and he responded inappropriately, no doubt. But that's not a relationship-ending kind of thing. It, what you have to do is conduct your business at a rational level. We don't have any romance. I went out on one date. It's hard to be romantic if you're firing guns at him all the time. You see what I'm saying? It's hard to be romantic when you got all those kids around. You can't tag him with failure to be romantic simply because you, you're in circumstances where romance is so very difficult to get to. And see what I'm saying? He can't fire at me if he got time to be romantic with Judy, Jane, and Holly. Where you get that time from? I think you cause some of your own problems. True. And I think he responds to them inappropriately. Mm -hmm. But you've got to still blame yourself for causing the problem to begin True. with. True. If you've forgiven him for that, you, you haven't really, because you're still living on it. Yeah, it's too it many. You, but he stopped, has he not? For 14 days? Last month. Not you know, you know Ms. Downing, all I want you to all do right. when you leave here is to be less angry. It's not his job to make the marriage romantic. It's both of your jobs. Yeah. And if you're not a person to be loved on, right. it's hard to love on you. Right. And I think that you need to let go of all that nonsense with the text. Mm -hmm. Push the reset button, because you got seven kids. Go home, make an hour for yourselves every day. I don't know if you can get a babysitter or what's going on. And get an hour for yourself every day and talk. And when you have something that you're upset with him about, don't. If you're upset about the diapers, don't give him text message anger with it. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> now, Mr. Davis... I think you're a good dude. I think you love her. I think you love her kids. I think you're a silly guy for doing all those texts, but I understand what it's like to be in a house where you feel like you're being, you know, rat a tat a tat a tat on, but that's not the way to go about it. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You know what I'm saying? So she's going to smooth it out. You're going to quit the texting, and then if you can afford it, you know, go see a, a, a marriage counselor because those kids deserve a shot at a two-person home. I the, agree. You, you know what I mean? They deserve a shot at And you're two good people. Nobody's done anything that wrong. You're just in a tough spot, and you responded poorly. And you can't get over it, and now you're responding poorly. So that's where we are. I hope you two do stay together. But get some help and... Don't have no more baby. I don't want no more. Get something fixed <laughs> no. or something. You, you Four know, weeks. You let it go. Four weeks. <laughs> it's just a matter of the game. After listening to what Judge Lynn said today, I think that my relationship might work out just with a little bit more counseling. Um, because I think we still need to talk about a lot of things and just address the feelings. I really love Nicole and... I'm going to do everything I can to make it work. I'm not going to, you know, communicate with anybody outside the relationship, and I'll seek counseling as well.